In response to calls for the scrapping of the upper chamber, the president of the Senate advising Nigerians on what to do. And Alafi of Oyo says mayhem will continue in the country if traditional rulers are not given a constitutional role in governance of Nigeria. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladendi. Welcome. This is Plus Politics. From everywhere you are joining us, let's look at the issues on the front burner. The President of the Senate, Hamed Lawan, has reacted to calls for the upper legislative chamber to be scrapped because of the perceived jumbo pay senators earn. Speaking further, the lawmaker representing Yo Yobe North challenged Nigerians to vote out lawmakers in the ninth Senate if they don't like their faces. He warned that there could be anarchy if the Senate is scrapped. As the Red Chamber is a leveler that ensured Nigerians were equally represented, we will look at the issues around this particular uh, uh, debate that the President of the Senate has thrown up. To discuss this with us, we have Mr. Gbola Oba, who is a public affairs, and Mr. Jide Ojo, who is also a public affairs. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, my brother. Yeah, good to have both of you. I, I sure know that this is going to be a whole lot of uh, intellectual discourse that I think will take us to the next level. Let me start with, um, maybe by way of first mention, let me start with Mr. Bolaoba. Now, this call is coming from the President of the Senate, and if you can look at the kernel of what he's pushing, he's saying that, Calling for the scrapping of the upper chamber will lead to chaos. And in clear terms, okay, let me not preempt your, your own interpretation of what he said. What do you think? Uh, what I think is that in so much as he's speaking from the position of defending, uh, defending the meal on his table, uh, if I want to be that pedestrian and that comical, in so much as he's speaking from the position of, um, of defending the meal on his table, uh, his point cannot totally be discountenanced because there is a peculiar reason why most federations in the world have upper chambers. The reason is that the lower chamber is usually the Chamber of Representation. In the US Congress, you have the House of Representatives as the Chamber of Representation. The upper chamber is the Chamber of Wisdom. And what is usually done in most federations is that the upper chamber is so allocated, the representation in the upper chamber is so allocated on the basis of equality of the federating units. That is why, be it Lagos, the smallest geographically in Nigeria, or Bonu, or on Niger State, the biggest geographically in Nigeria, each of those two states has three senators in the upper chambers. So it is the chamber of wisdom to start with and chamber of relevance and equality of the federating units. Okay. So as, as a technical student of government, I cannot say that he is not speaking to, uh, a, to a constitutional or theoretical governmental fact. However, one can also say that he, his opinion may have been instructed by the fact that he is the, he is the leader 
of the chamber that most Nigerians tend to want to believe is surplus to requisition in our constitutional order okay. is superfluous and should be should Crap. be uh, cut off. Okay, good. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Agbalaba. Thank you for your opening remark. Let me go to Gide Ojo. Um, what do you think about this call? Uh, do you think that um, saying that Nigeria may run into anarchy was overstating the issue? What do you think? Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to weigh in on this issue. Uh, well, I think um, Senator Ahmed Lawan is trying to preserve, um, his call is based on self-preservation. How do I mean? Um, is it that we cannot in good conscience do without the Senate? I don't think the question is in the affirmative. I wrote in my column in the Point newspaper of October 23, 2019. Uh, the title is Restructure to Reduce Cost of Governance in Nigeria. And part of my argument in that article, uh, October 23, 2019, was the need for us to look at uh, reducing or scrapping the Senate. A couple of countries, three of them, have taken steps to either scrap or reduce the number of their Senate. One is Senegal in 2012. Another is Mauritania in 2017. And last year, Italy actually decided that from 2023 general election, there is going to be a reduction in the number of the House of Reps in Italy from 613 to 400, and from 315 in the Senate to 200. It's because, it's because they, they were overwhelmed with economic challenges I felt one of the ways by which they can reduce cost of governance is to either scrap or reduce the number of persons in the Senate. And this argument is not only being made by foreigners. Let me remind our, our viewers about what Senator Rocha Sokorocha, immediate past governor, or the former, former governor of Himo State said during the debate on medium times expenditure framework on the 2020 budget. He was actually the one that said there should be a reduction in the number of senators from three to one, and that for us of representatives, there should not be more than three House of rest members from every state. Okay. In a modified position, the chairman of Nigerian Governors Forum, who is also the incumbent governor of the state, said, we should scrap the Senate, scrap the Senate to save money. Here we are in this 2021 budget, a princely sum of 128 billion okay. or 125 billion as it were. Is Senate president or president of the Senate as more appropriate? Okay. Gideon you know, Joe. I, I, I know you, I know this is going to lead to this, so much to really uh, emphasize on this issue. Going back to Balaoba, I'm looking at um, the justification for the cost of governance to be reduced, and I think two of you are on the same page. But can we look at the structure of governance, the intent, which Balaoba also alluded to? What is the essence of having the upper chamber and the lower chamber? You know, constitutionally, as we speak, there are issues that it, is, it only ends with the upper chamber. So as we look at the constitutional review, which is the way forward, if this must happen, how do we ensure that we don't have that experience, you know, not being lost out in issues that has to do with uh, 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 um, separation of powers? 
Uh, to be very honest with you, it's not so much the issue of separation of powers, but the issue of... Sorry, maybe checks and balances now. Hello? Maybe checks and balances. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. Uh, to be very honest with you, no. Not related to separation of powers, not related to checks and balances. We are talking about brass knuckle issue of cost management here. Yeah. Cost, brass knuckle issue of cost management. I was keeping the example later, but my colleague has mentioned it in Italy. Italy is a relatively advanced society, but because of the economic situation of Italy, they pruned representations in their two chambers, in their two, in their bicameral chambers, they pruned it down by a third each. Now, in the case of Nigeria, I personally will not support the extirpation or the abrogation of the Senate, I would rather support the reduction of senators. What do I mean by that? This is a federation. And because Nigeria is a federation, and like I accentuated or like I submitted earlier on, in a federation, the upper chamber, apart from being the chamber of wisdom, is also the chamber of equity. You can imagine that the number of representatives from Kano is almost twice the number of representatives from Lagos in, in, numerical, in numerical order. But the number of senators from Kano is the same as the number of senators from Lagos. So at the level of wisdom, at the level of, uh, of belongingness, at the level of equity, Lagos, Lagos can feel that no legislative activity will predispose Kano, we give Kano such a power to muzzle everything that Lagos may stand for. Because when it gets to the upper chamber, Lagos as relatively smallly represented in the House of Representatives as it may be, can align with other states to marshal the equality of numbers to say Kano thus far and no further, legislative machinery-wise. So I am one who is not so taken by the sentimentally, uh, sentimentally engaging argument of extirpating or abrogating the upper chamber. I am, however, one who believes in the same, in the same uh, uh, penicilla, penicilla that the Italians have employed, pruning down, pruning down the number of representatives in the two chambers because they will still do the same okay. thing. Okay. Going the Senegal route, Going the Mauritania road, my, my colleague, who is very knowledgeable about political affairs in the world, my colleague also knows that the factors that, that instructed the Senegalese and the Mauritanian ones, we don't want such factors in Nigeria. Okay, good. Thank you so much. Uh, um, Mr. Gide Ojo, let me put some of your thoughts together and continue the conversation from this angle. Now, you alluded to some democracies across the world, and a good example was, you know, the issue of electoral college in America, where we understand that different states with different representatives. And from what Rocha Sokrocha is saying, is looking at um, equality across board, irrespective of the geographical size, irrespective of the population. So how do we ensure that we still have this you know, representation that is still justiciable? Or what exactly could be the fear of uh, uh, the president of the Senate saying that if you don't push equality, where we have three senators across different states, we might be inviting anarchy? Well, I, I don't know what his fears are, but um, it's, very, it's a very genuine argument he's making to say, Wait for 2023 and voters, whoever you don't like. 
even if you vote out the entire 109 members of Senate, does that change the, the running cost of that chamber? Mm. The point is no. I do not subscribe to the fact that um, the National Assembly is just um, is over pampered. No. Because really, my issues with National Assembly is about the corruption in that system. It's not about what they take home. Legitimately, what they take home is nothing outrageous. But when you look at you know, the other padding and mm. you know, when they go on oversight, all those uh, blackmailing MDAs, finger pointing like the one done by Gosville Fabio against the members of the National Assembly during the NDDC probe. Those are the issues I have with them. However, in line with other democracies, we cannot pretend to say that we have an healthy economy as, as we speak. We are running a deficit budget. The 13 trillion budget for 2021, we are borrowing as much as almost half of that amount, about five to six trillion, to service that budget. And our debt service portfolio has increased substantially that uh, it's almost equal to our capital envelope. So what am I saying? Look at US. US has how many senators? 100. Only 100, only 100. And that is a country with over 350 million population. Why should we have three per state? We can have two per state. We can also pull down the number of House of Reps because at the end of the day, the fact that Lagos is having about 12 House of Reps member, Kano is having about 15 House of Reps member. What value addition has it brought? We can reduce the House of Reps from 360 to 200, and, uh, 200 or even 220. One third, reduce it by one third. That will bring down the cost of running that institution. Because as it were, Nigerians are being asked to tighten their belt. Right now, many state governments, including the federal government, is showing worker salary. I don't know if you know, Kayode, that some ministry, department, and agencies of federal government have not been paid in the last two, three months. Hmm. Why should we now be budgeting as much as $125 billion to service an institution of 469 members, as well as National Service Commission, the Nigerian Institute for Legislative Studies, and okay. the Legislative, Nigerian Institute for uh, Democracy and Legislative Studies, and the NABRU, National Budget Research uh, Office. Those are the three institutions, and the entire workforce, to the best of my knowledge, I'm not sure it's up to a thousand. Okay. Even with those institutions, like NIS, NABRU, and, uh, and the National Assembly Service Commission, added to the 360 House exactly. of Rest member and 109 exactly. member. It's just the exigency of this time. Okay. We can do more with less. Good. Okay, but Mr. Like Gideon. I said, like I, I, I said, I, 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 I'm trying to make sure that we exhaust whatever we can before we round up this segment. You just raised something very critical, and I like Mr. Bola about to react to that. Uh, I, I listened to one of the lawmakers in one of those days when they were also, you know, pointing, accusing fingers at the executive arm that we are always talking about the cost of governance with the legislative. And it did say that we have about 8 to 9% of the annual budget dedicated to the National Assembly. And I'm asking, if it, even if it is 5%, we're talking about 5% dedicated to less than 1,000 people out of the 200 million people. So how do we let them know how you know, real this issue of cost of governance is so that they can be on the same page with us and not be self-serving in saying that, oh, we are not the issue here. I'm very honest with you. This is one topic that um, one can sound seemingly out of touch with the popular opinions of Nigerians. 
I think at this juncture, I'm beginning to sense that uh, myself and my colleague are converging on the side of pruning the numbers of the two chambers. If that is an argument that he is proceeding, I am more predisposed to pruning the numbers just like the Italians uh, have re recently have voted in a referendum to do from their next, next uh, legislative session. However, as a federalist and as a relative minority, I know the implications of unicameralism, legislative unicameralism, what it may translate to in Nigeria, and I want to say with a degree of prescience that it will not bode well for this country. Because let's be very honest with ourselves. Look at look at what has just look at the NSAS protest that has just ended. Whilst most of the southern states could identify with the agitations of the NSAS protesters, what did most of the Northern states do. They came out with a position that was that was blatantly contradictory to the position of most other states and the protesters. For them, they said they never wanted SARS ended. And for them, they said they had more challenging situations than the finesse of the rule of law that those in the South were agitating for. As though the finesse of respect for the rule of law would ultimately not also translate to the quality of governance and the quality of policing that they will get if operatives of the Nigeria police and security agencies were made to be conscious of the fact that they need to respect the dignity of, 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 of the human being in the course of their service. You see those contradictions? When you have distinctly different values like that, to not allow an, an upper chamber, to not allow bicameral by, by legislative uh, uh, chamber system, and only allow a unicameral legislative chamber system, my brother, I want to say with a degree of con conceit, it will lead to war. Okay. Because I will not sit down and see those values that I, that I cherish being literally run amok by the power of the numerical representation of a particular area of the country because they have the numbers. Okay. But the degree to which the tyranny of the majority could, could hold in the lower chamber, the House of Representatives, that degree is reduced because of the equality of representation at the upper chamber. I'm sitting here now that the reason why the states of Vermont, why states like Montana, why states like Virginia, okay. some states are happy in America is because they know that as small as they are, they have equal number of senators at the upper chamber with California. Okay. Which is, you want me to shock you? California is almost two times, two and a half times the size of Nigeria. Or Texas, about two times plus the size of Nigeria. Two okay, I, I remember we had that discussion uh, some time ago. Uh, we understand that uh, it's not as big as Nigeria, but almost more than, uh, uh, um, more than half of Nigeria. But your point is very clear, and I will not forget it in a hurry. And I sincerely hope that the authorities will listen to you. But in, in rounding off, let me speak to... Uh, Gide Ojo, because I will still keep Mr. Gola about for the second topic. Mr. Gide Ojo, let's cap it up so that uh, our guests are not confused on your positions, because I think your positions are the same in terms of let not scrap any of the upper chamber, let's not scrap any of the chambers, if I get you correctly. And what you are saying is let's trim down the number in uh, looking at what Rocha Sokorocha did say that let's have one senator from each state. And let's have the numbers of the House of Representatives equal. So what exactly is Gideo just saying? Uh, I'm saying let's have maximum of two senators 
and we can also look at possibility of having a reduced number of first of rest members. I've said that we can have a maximum of 220. Let's cut it by one third instead of 360, and nothing will be lost. But kind of the, my own position is not limited to the National Assembly. We need to also examine section 147 sub 3 of the Constitution, which mandated the president to appoint a senator, to appoint a minister from each of the 36 states. Hmm. That is also a drain on our resources. I Do agree. we need 36 ministers in Nigeria? The answer is no, because each of these ministers ended up with senior special advisors, uh, special advisors, senior special assistant, and all manner of uh, all, all manner of also of uh, aid. We can have a to, uh, a comprehensive reduction, both in the National Assembly, reduce the it by either to one or two senators, a maximum of 220 members of House of Reps. Then come to the executive. Let's think out with section 147 sub 3 of the Constitution to now say that every every geopolitical zone should produce maximum of three ministers. Instead of every state having a minister represented in the cabinet. The good, the wisdom behind that, again, when you go to US, 350 million population. They have only 15 second trees running that economy. 15, including the vice president, running a the economy, economy. of the US. Why hmm. didn't they say that because they, there are 50 states in the US, every state must produce a secretary or equivalent of our minister? Interesting. Right? That would Interesting. have made Donald Trump to have 50 ministers. So we can also reduce. By tinkering with Beautiful. section 147 top, top three of the constitution, reduce the number of ministers to maximum of three per zone. Okay, good. So at the end of the day, we have maximum of 18 ministers and give one to FCT, and that makes it 19 ministers. Also, awesome. maximum. Also, awesome. that way we are also reducing, further reducing the cost of governance. Okay, that thank you so much, Gideojo. Thank you so much, Gideo Joe, for your time. Uh, Gideo Joe is a public affairs analyst and also Bola Oba, who is also a public affairs analyst. Thank you, gentlemen, for your insight. We quite appreciate. But guess what? We may still have to keep Bola Oba for the second topic. And when we come back, Alafi Ofoyo tells us what will stop the insecurity in the country. That will be up for discussion. Please don't go anywhere.